let's take a virtual tour around Royal Caribbean's independence of the seas and show you all around this Freedom Class ship, what there is to do, where there is to eat, where there is to drink, and all the cool things in between. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and today we're taking a look at Royal Caribbean's Independence of the Seas. This is a Freedom Class cruise ship and it offers a variety of sailings depending on when you happen to go. And you might be wondering, what is there to do on Independence of the Seas? What does it look like? Well, we have a full tour of it, starting off with the pool deck on Independence. Now, Independence was the first Royal Caribbean cruise ship to be amplified during the Royal Amplified program. This is a series of ships that got upgrades and enhancements. And we'll see some of these as we go throughout the ship. So if you went on Independence of the Seas prior to 2018, it's going to look different to you. And if you've never been on the ship, well, it's all great. And certainly the pool deck is a hub of activities. Lots of pools to check out as well. There's hot tubs and it's basically your go-to place. I think for most folks, when they're on a cruise ship, especially Independence of the Seas, they're up in the pool. And if you have younger children, Splash Away Bay is where you're going to be hanging out. Splash Away Bay is a kid's aqua park. There are places to get wet in so many different ways. You've got water slides, you've got a giant dunk tank, geysers, sprayers, buckets, other things. If your kid it comes out of this not soaking wet, they're not doing it right. There's also a little bit of a pool in the back. It's kind of unhidden area, but there is actually a swimming pool for them. But this is the kids area and they're seating all around. So yes, you as the parents can sit there and relax. Tide and trails, we can pick up some gear if you're going to go snorkeling or do some adventures maybe uh, you know, on shore. And what's that? An ice cream station next to Tide and Trail? That's right. It's time for an ice cream break. And on Royal Caribbean's Independence of the Seas, there is complimentary ice cream at Sprinkles available uh, throughout the day. And you just stop here, get as much ice cream as you like to, and they hand it to you. So this is complimentary. Great for the kids, conveniently located near the Splash Away Bay. And after the kids have that ice cream, or maybe before they have that ice cream, then you promise them the ice cream later, you're going to want to go to Fish and Ships. Fish and Ships is a combination of complimentary and specialty restaurant. There are some food here that's included and some food that costs extra. As the name implies, there is, well, fish and chips available at Fish and Ships. It's hard to say both words very, very quickly, but this is a great poolside eatery. This is only available on a couple of ships, this and Ovation of the Seas, but something kind of different to check out. And Fish and Ships offers uh, some, you know, grab and go kind of food if you're interested in that. And what's convenient about it is that it's right by the pool deck, so you don't have to go out it's great if you're already at the pool. You don't want anyone to go inside, get wet, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's very, very convenient. Walking down the pool deck on Independence of the Seas, there are chairs and seats all around. Not only do you, can you sit by the pool, there's also covered seating available throughout the deck on the lower pool deck for you to take up. So if you just want to maybe be out of the shade or less competitive for your seats, they're available there. There's also swim vests available that are complimentary to take. You don't have to worry about paying for them. Just take them, put them on your kids. And that way, if they're not strong swimmers, they can enjoy that. And really, the pool deck is your place to hang out and have a good time while you're out at sea or in port. The pool is usually a pretty popular area, especially during the warmer months, and you get a chance to kind of hang out. It's really just a place for people to go, obviously, cool down. But I think a lot of folks really look forward to that pool deck. Let's head upstairs, and in between the two pool decks is a lounge area, seating area. Usually, this area is reserved for suite guests, maybe available to other guests as well, but usually it's reserved just for suite folks if you're in a grand suite or higher. Here we have the Sky Lounge, which is the upper pool deck bar. And the Sky Lounge, just like the lower pool deck bar, is just a bar with a different view. You can get all your drinks here. Your drink package works here. In fact, if you have a drink package uh, on Independence of the Seas, it works at all the bars, restaurant, and lounges on board the ship. So you don't have to worry too much about that. And you can get your pool drink here. In fact, a lot of people who get on board the ship on the first day will head to the Sky Bar to get their embarkation, first drink of the cruise drink, and this great sitting. I love these Adirondack chairs that overlook the pool deck. So if you want a bit of more of a breeze, that's really the appeal of deck 12, which has that upper pool deck area. You get kind of more of an ocean breeze or just a breeze in general. And it's a little more comfortable, especially during the warm months when it can be a little more stagnant out there. But there is less shade on deck 12. So kind of depends what you're looking for, what the weather conditions are and, you know, what you feel like at the time. There's also the jogging track on deck 12. It encompasses the top part of deck 12 around the pool. And I don't know how many laps there are to do a mile, but this is where you want to go if you want to jog, run, or in something in between there, walk perhaps. Uh, there's options for you to do that with the jogging track, and it's nice you can do a little bit of people watching. In addition to the jogging track, there's also a lot more seating on deck 12. I think most people come up here to do sunbathing because there's no shade really up here. 
But if you're also looking for something a little further away from everything else, one a little quieter, a little less crowded, this can be a great spot, especially as you move away from the pool decks. You're going to find some ample opportunities for seating. And then you have this mid deck. You know, back in the day, this was called the St. Tropes deck. I don't know if they really call it that. You know, fun fact of trivia, way back in the day, I'm talking back in the early 2000s, the St. Tropes deck was the topless deck uh, for sunbathing, that is, in Europe. I don't think they really do that anymore. But anyway, this is another area you can go to to sunbathe. We're looking down at the Solarium. This is the adults pool only area. It's available on all Royal Caribbean cruise ships. We'll talk a little bit about that as we move into the Solarium a little bit later. First up, though, it's time for some mini golf. How about Independence Dunes? This is the mini golf course that is complimentary to enjoy on Independence of the Seas. Getting here, you got to walk up to the front part of, well, you go to deck 12 and then you walk up to, I guess this is deck 13, technically. This Stargate looking thing is actually a mister, which allows you to cool down, basically walk through it and it sprays you with a little bit of misting wa water. And then, of course, you have the mini golf course itself. Complimentary, go as you want. You can go in here anytime. It's actually a really good idea, maybe after dinner at night in the evening when it's a little less hot out. But if you're like my kids, they don't care what the temperature is. They just want to play golf. And by play golf, I really mean cheat at golf. They kind of drag the ball around and then pretend they got a hole in one, even though they dragged it the entire way. But, you know, it's fun whether you want to keep score or not. Mini golf is a classic cruise ship experience. And, you know, during the refurbishment, the course got a little bit of an upgrade. So it's a nice, colorful course. Here's another view of that solarium. The solarium is for guests 16 and above. Don't worry, your kids can walk through here if they're not 16, they just can't hang out here. This pool and the hot tubs are reserved for guests that are 16 and older. And it's basically an adult enclave. Otherwise, it's open air solarium. And what I like about the solarium in general is it's a little more chill vibe. I also like the seating in the solarium. It has a little more padding to their lounge chairs. It makes it a little more comfortable. Great for napping, by the way. Also, if you're looking to get some work done, I do like the seating in the solarium, not the lounge chairs, but these chairs that you see near the water. It's a great view. They're comfortable. And it's just, for me, it's a little more conducive to do work. You get a little bit of a view and you get to have those comfortable chairs. So it's not bad. There's also a solarium bar in the solarium. This is where you'll go to get a drink while you're in the solarium. There are waiters that'll come and take your drinks as well. But if you'd like to, you can go to the solarium bar and order your drinks over there. You're also going to find some cantilevered hot tubs in the solarium on the Independence of the Sea. So they're cantilevered, which means they actually overhang the side of the ship. So if you go over to the glass and look down, you're going to see the ocean. This freaks my mother-in-law out. She will not do them. <laughs> but for everybody else, if you don't mind that, it's actually a really cool view. And on sea days, it almost resembles that kind of infinity pool, if you will. All right, let's head uh, back down deck 12 a little faster. There we go. Yeah, put some pep in that step as we go to the other end of deck 12 and check out some of the activities. Starting with ping pong. There are ping pong tables you can use throughout the day. In addition, there can also be ping pong tournaments during your cruise. Look for that in the cruise compass. Off the back of the ship, we've got the aft view, which is always relaxing. Nice view of the back of the ship. See where you've been. And there's also more seating. A lot of people don't know about the seating back here on deck 12. If you're looking for really like, you just want somewhere to sit outside and everywhere else is crowded, this might be a good spot for you. But of course, the aft part of deck 12 is really, we're gonna find all the fun activities on board. Starting with the Flowrider Surf Simulator. These surf simulators where you can try to stand up surf or boogie board or bodyboarding or just try to stay on board without wiping out completely. It's a complimentary activity. There are lessons that can cost extra, but most of the time, most people just line up and go on the Flowrider. Of course, there are also two water slides on Independence of the Seas, the Perfect Storm water slides. These are racer slides and this is complimentary as well. Go up to the top, race down, see if you beat the person who came out the other slide. It's a lot of fun. It's not nearly as fast as it might look. What's cool about the water slides is there's a translucent part to it. So you can actually see out the ocean as you pass through, assuming your eyes are actually open for it. You know, the lines for the flow rider and the water slides can get a little longer during the daytime, especially on sea days. But on the first day of the cruise, might be a good opportunity to try that out. And also try out the sky pad. The sky pad is a virtual reality bungee experience. Basically, you are strapped in with bungee cords and then put on a virtual reality headset, although it's optional if you want to put the headset on. If you have the headset on, you're basically jumping along to a video game. And what you do with the trampoline pad is what you experience in the VR headset. Basically, as you jump in real life, you jump in the video game, but you don't have to do that. And it's also complimentary. These little chip climber things are a lot of fun for the younger kids. My kids love doing them as well. It's just a, it's like a piece of art that is actually functional and kids can climb all the way around it. It's safe. They got that netting around there so they can't likely possibly fall off. 
and it's kind of a fun way for the kids to get some energy out. My kids just like doing it, and they just go up and down constantly. There's also a basketball court on Independence of the Seas. Now, it also doubles for other things like pickleball, dodgeball, soccer, volleyball. So it's a multi-purpose venue, but it also, of course, is a basketball court and complimentary. During the course of your cruise, you may see special events that are organized through the ship's activities team in the basketball court. So if you're interested in trying those things out or just going for a pickup game, that's available as well. And like any Royal Caribbean cruise ship, there's also a rock climbing wall on Independence of the Seas. Rock climbing, also complimentary and a way for you to try your talents out at going up there. I also love the seating that you've got outside on deck 12. Some interesting ones, the swings or some of the, you know, some different places to kind of just hang out and chill out, which I really like. After all that activities, you might be a little hungry and there is Johnny Rockets, the specialty restaurant on Independence of the Seas. This is a specialty restaurant. It means it costs extra. You pay a cover charge and all the food is included. Although drinks, including milkshakes, are extra. If you have a drink package, then the milkshakes are included with that. If you have a dining package, well, then Johnny Rockets is included with this as well. There's indoor and outdoor seating at Johnny Rockets. And just like the land-based versions of Johnny Rockets, if you don't know, Johnny Rockets is a chain restaurant that's based on the 50s diners of America. And you're going to have burgers, hot dogs, chili, fries, and everything else in between. And, you know, it's great comfort food for anybody who enjoys burgers and hot dogs, quite frankly. And it's fun for the kids, fun for adults. And there's always oldies music playing. So get it out your, bust out your Aretha Franklin, sing the Four Tops, or maybe some Elvis. Johnny Rockets is the place for that. And it's great for sea day activities. A lot of people like going here for lunch because it's a, something different. And the quality of the burgers can be a little bit better maybe than you might get in the complimentary players. All right, back inside, we're going to head check out the arcade, which is right next to Adventure Ocean. The arcade is, well, it's an arcade. I don't think I have to explain this one. There's video games to play. It does cost extra money to go here. You buy credits on your CPAS card, and then you tell your kids that they can only play a certain amount of games. Then you relent and buy more games for them, and then you tell them that's it, and then it's like one more time, and then maybe you'll finally be done playing video games with the kids on there. But the arcade can be a fun spot or reward for the kids during the cruise. But of course, Adventure Ocean is nearby and Adventure Ocean is the complimentary kids programming available on Independence of the Seas. There's kids programming for three to five, six to eight, and nine to 11 years old. And then we got the teens club beyond that and the nursery, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But of course you've got Aquanauts, which is for three to five, Explorers, which is for six to eight, and Voyagers from nine to 11. And basically when you get on board the ship, you're going to register your kids for this. There's no cost to going to Adventure Ocean. Uh, during the daytime anyway, for a late night, there is an extra charge. If your kids say past 10 o'clock, which in my opinion is the best money you could ever spend on a cruise, somebody else watching your kids while you get to stay out late at a bar or restaurant or lounge. Yes, please. But my kids love Adventure Ocean. It's a lot of fun because it's just something to do that on their level and it's organized. The living room is the teen area on board at Independence of the Seas. So this is the teen club, if you will. There's also activities for them. Unlike a regular Adventure Ocean, the activities here are less structured. It's more of really a hangout place. They do offer activities and things to do, but a lot of the teens come in and out and kind of do their own thing or just kind of socialize, which is kind of what teenagers do, right? And there is the Royal Babies and Tots Nursery. If you have children under the age of three years old, this is where you can bring them. The nursery does cost extra, but again, having taken both my children in the nursery many, many times when they were that age, it's some of the best money you can spend on board a cruise ship because again, they take care of the kids. These are wonderful program. And whether your kids are in the nursery or older, I really love what Adventure Ocean offers for them. Probably you'll be eating a lot of food here in the Windjammer. The Windjammer, this is the buffet on board Independence of the Seas. Of course, when you walk in, you're going to have to washy-washy, and that's going to be wash your hands. It's mandatory for everybody that walks in there. There's the hand-washing stations for you to go. And then once you're inside, well, then the world is your oyster or lobster or steak or hot dog because there is a lot of great food in the wind Jamaica. it's open for breakfast lunch dinner it is complimentary and it is your go-to spot for most cases i think for a quick meal and what's the great about the buffet of course is that the sheer variety of food available here there's a lot of food tons of food and whether you're interested in salads or meats or hot dogs or sandwiches or omelets they've got it all it's available throughout the day and you're going to find a pretty healthy selection, maybe not healthy, but a good selection of food. Some of it healthy, maybe some of it not so healthy and, uh, you know, a good variety in between. And the nice thing, it does change every day for lunch and dinner. Breakfast is pretty much the same all the time, but hello. And, you know, for most people, I think this is just a good, everybody's going to find something that they want to eat in the Windjamer. 
You're going to find a lot of seating in the Windjammer. Uh, there's seating on the sides and in the back. I like the aft seating a little bit more because you get more of a view, but they can also be more popular because everyone else has the exact same thoughts. But there's table sizes of two all the way up to, you know, about 10 or so. So you're going to find table seating all around for you to enjoy. You can take the food, by the way, out of the Windjammer. If you want to bring it back to your room, go out to the pool deck or something like that, that's totally fine as well. But I think most people end up just taking the food and sitting down wherever they can find a spot. Uh, the Windjammer can be pretty busy in the morning for breakfast. It's still busy for lunch, especially on sea days. But, you know, your your mileage may vary. And especially if you hit it during different times of the morning or afternoon, you may find it more or less crowded. But usually you're going to be able to find a table. And if you can find a table, ask one of the helpful crew members. They can help find and direct you and clean one off. No problem at all. You're also going to find Giovanni's table on Independence of the Seas. Giovanni's table is the classic Royal Caribbean Italian specialty restaurant. There's a cover charge to eat at Giovanni's. And you're going to find, well... A lot of Italian food. This is, again, Royal Caribbean's take on Italian food, classic Italian food, basically the red checker tablecloth without actually the tablecloth here. But you're going to find pastas and other specialty Italian dishes. Also, the steak here at Giovanni's might be some of the best steak you have on Independence of the Seas, even better than Chop's Grill, which we'll see in a little bit. A lot of people swear by the Giovanni's steak. It's available for lunch and dinner. Dinner on out every night. Lunches can be varying depending on the days. Check the schedule for it. But... Again, Giovanni Table, a specialty restaurant that has an upcharge to dine here. And as I mentioned, there's also Chop's Grill right across from Giovanni Table. Chop's Grill is the specialty steak restaurant on the Independence of the Seas. This is a staple. Every Royal Caribbean ship has a Chop's Grill because, well, people do love their steak. And there's a great variety of them. You've got filet mignon, New York Strip, a couple other varieties as well. But Chop's Grill is really the place to go to to enjoy, you know, a classic steak. It's got that steakhouse look to it. If you've been on a Royal Caribbean cruise, then you've probably seen a Chops Grill, and this is a specialty restaurant with an upcharge to it as well. I think besides the steaks, which I think most people come here for, the sides are really good as well. Different choices of mushrooms and mashed potatoes and asparagus, and I think it's vastly underrated. The mac and cheese. So order a bunch of sides. Even if you're not going to eat them all, just sample them, put them on the side of your plate. It really does enhance the meal quite a bit. And Chops Grill is open for dinner every night. It can be open for lunch on some days. So again, check the schedule for what days they're open for lunch. Well, we're going to say goodbye to the Windjammer. I'm sorry we got to go. Goodbye. Goodbye. And we're going to head over to the spa. Yeah, after all that food, you need somebody to make you feel a little bit better with the massage. The Vitality Spa is open on the Independence of the Seas. The Vitality Spa is a combination of salon and spa. This obviously all costs extra if you'd like to. You can take a tour of the spa on the first day of the cruise. I actually recommend it whether you're actually going to do anything or not because a lot of folks don't realize what is available in the spa. And it's, there's a lot that's available for you to check on out. I do recommend booking a lot of these appointments before the cruise via the cruise planner website because time slots are limited. But you should feel confident that if you get on board the ship and feel like a, a massage all of a sudden, you can definitely do that. There are specials available during the course of your cruise. Ask the spa staff about it every day. There is a different special that goes on. Usually they're combo deals, like spend X amount of money and you'll get this, this, and that, or you know this amount of money off this and that. Anyway, the deal of the day, if you will, changes daily. So talk to the staff about that once you get on board the ship. But again, even if you prepay it before the cruise, you'll probably still get a good price. Also on board Independence is a full gym. The Vitality Fitness Center offers you, I think, quite frankly, what you'd look for in any gym. Uh, that would be, of course, the free weights, machines, ellipticals, treadmills. It's a pretty big gym and the equipment's pretty darn good. This is not your hotel gym that they somebody stuck a free weights in the corner. I mean, this is a pretty big area. So enough room for you to spread on out and get your workout in if you'd like to. I think a lot of people always talk about the gym and they hit it up maybe on day one and then they think about it day two and then they just give up on the rest of the cruise. <laughs> but there are some dedicated folks who definitely want to get their fitness in and that's what the fitness center is all about. And it is complimentary to enjoy the fitness center. There's also changing rooms and sauna and steam rooms, although keep in mind the sauna and steam rooms were closed because of COVID-19, but that may change by the time you get on board the ship, but they are theoretically there for you to possibly enjoy as time moves forward. A little tip about the changing rooms and the showers available here. This is a good tip if you have families and you're sharing a room and hypothetically your teenage daughter is taking up the shower, you can go to the showers in the gym and use them and they can oftentimes be available for you to use. So some people like going there just to mix it up. All right, heading up to deck 14, we've got the top deck area. This is the Viking Crown Lounge, which has a bar, a dance floor, and it's a multi-purpose venue. Most of the time, it's actually just a great place to hang out. It's a great lounge area with fantastic views of the ship and the ocean around you. 
But in addition to that, they can also have different events like trivia up there, as well as perhaps other events. Uh, I've seen the dance party, usually the late night dance party, the oops, 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 that party. Yeah, it's up here usually. But I think most people come out here, grab a drink and just stare, you know, just enjoy the views because it's really pretty when you can sit up here and just see everything around you. It's a great vantage point. And the, the Viking Crown Lounge has just been a favorite for a long, long time because of these views. It's just hard to go wrong with it, you know? So if you're kind of, if you want to read a book, if you want to enjoy a drink with a view, this is a great spot and also a great day one place. If it's too hot outside, if it's, you know, you're going in the summertime and it's really warm out, the Viking Crown Lounge allows you to enjoy your first day drink, get a view of everything, but still hang out. You're also going to find the Diamond Lounge on the Independence of the Seas. The Diamond Lounge is a reserved area just for people who are diamond or higher in Royal Caribbean's Crown and Anchor Society. So this is a place where you can just hang out. All you do is swipe your card. If you're a diamond member or higher, it'll allow you to come through the door. And in the evening, there's complimentary drinks. There's also hors d'oeuvres served. But really, it's more like a social club. It's like a hangout area where you can sit down. During the daytime, it's pretty quiet. In the evening, it's more of a social hangout where you see a lot of diamond members coming in chit-chatting, shooting the breeze, talking about their crews, and meeting friends. You're also going to find on the other side of the Viking Crown Lounge on deck 14, the Sweet Lounge. So it's just like the Diamond Lounge, but this is for suite guests only. One of the major perks you get at, of staying in a suite, which is a grand suite or higher, is access to the Sweet Lounge. So the Sweet Lounge offers complimentary drinks in the evening and also offers hors d'oeuvres in the evening. And in the daytime, they can offer different things. Sometimes they have little light snacks as well. And the concierge is available in the Sweet Lounge. The concierge is basically the guest services for sweet guests. They can solve many of the problems, billing or logistical issues they may have. And the concierge is available. They have set hours. They're pretty much there all day long and can assist sweet guests with any issues. I also like that they have an outdoor area in the sweet lounge. So if weather permitting, you want to go out there and have some fresh air or just a different view, there is seating available as well. And up top, I guess this is deck 15 technically is the puzzle break center. This is the escape room, the escape room on independence of the seas offers well an escape room experience where you have a certain amount of time to solve a series of clues to figure out a solution to the puzzle of escaping the room basically you and a bunch of other guests work together to solve all these little puzzles and clues and codes and break it all out and yeah it's kind of a great challenge something very different uh, from what you usually find on a cruise ship and you have a set amount of time to do it and if you figure out all the clues before time runs out then you win if not well, they'll tell you what happened and how to have solved it, but it's kind of a neat challenge, something different to, you know, experience. So it's available to you. You can pre-book this. The escape room does have an additional cost to it. So something to consider if you're going on the independence of the seas. And one more thing about the escape rooms, by the way, if you've done an escape room on another Royal Caribbean ship, they are different. So each game is different depending on which ship you happen to go on. All right, let's head in the elevator and go down. We've, I think we've covered the top decks here. We're going to head down to eight. Seven, six. Ah, yes, we're down in the dining room now. The main dining room on Independence of the Seas. The dining room is one of the major hubs of dining on the cruise ship. As the name implies, it is the, well, main dining room. It's where you'll go for dinner every night. The main dining room is also open for breakfast every morning, and it can be open for lunch on sea days. The main dining room is complimentary, although there are a couple of things here that do cost extra. There's a lobster or steak option, but most people come here, they just eat off the regular menu. The menu changes every day in the dining room uh, for dinner. Uh, for lunch, it does change every day as well, but the breakfast menu is the same every day. When you go to the main dining room, you're going to be seated in either my time or traditional seating. My time seating is when you go and you pick the time. You can dine different times of the day. You know, whether you want to have an early dinner, like at 5.30 or a later dinner, one another evening at 7 o'clock, it's up to you. You have different tables, different table mates, and different waiters every night in my time dining. Alternatively, you can do traditional dining. Traditional dining is when you have the same table, the same time every night, and the same wait staff for your meals. Which one is better? Which should you choose? Up to you. I like traditional dining because I like having, well, the same wait staff and the same table assignment. But the there's a downfall to traditional dining. It's only either early, like 5.30, or late, 8 o'clock. And you can probably already draw your own conclusions as to the drawbacks of both those times. So there's not as much flexibility in it. But regardless, you're probably going to the main dining room for dinner. Now, we're down on the Royal Promenade now. And the Royal Promenade is the main thoroughfare on Independence of the Seas. It is a classic Royal Caribbean area of any cruise ship and you're going to find shopping dining drinks shopping lots to do on the royal promenade and not only is it a way to get from point a to point b but there's usually a lot of activities starting off with the r bar 
on the independence of the seas. And the R bar is kind of just a, you know, hangout place to enjoy. There's a, it's a lounge which has different drinks to consume. And, uh, you know, it's another place for you. But I like about it, it's a little more chic, a little more hip, I guess, if you want to call it that. But you got some good drink options there. And across from the R bar is guest services. Guest services is where you can go for any problems you might have on board billing, something doesn't work, you've got a question. Odds are you're going to guest services to get that remedy. Do guest services available 24 hours a day and can help you with all the problems you may have. Also next door to the guest services is the shore excursions desk. If you want to book a shore excursion, have a question about shore excursion, change your shore excursion, anything in between, anything related to the tours you booked through Royal Caribbean, this is the place you can go for that. I do recommend when it comes to shore excursions to book it before the cruise via the cruise planner website. Something else kind of neat about the Royal Promenade are these Promenade View cabins. You're going to find the next cruise office where you can book another Royal Caribbean cruise. And this is the place to go if you want to, well, book another cruise while you're on a cruise. If you're on board the ship and thinking to yourself, man, I'd love to book a cruise, then go to next cruise. If you're watching this video at home, thank you, and you're thinking, man, it's time to book a cruise, don't wait to book it on board. Book it now. The price can go up by the time you go to next cruise. But the benefit of booking your cruise while on board the ship, well, you're going to get reduced deposit and extra onboard credit. But again, if you wait weeks or months till you get on the ship to book to get that extra onboard credit or reduced deposit, the price may have already gone up and would have you know undone any benefits that you would have had by booking on board. So book now. But if you're on the cruise, having a great time, want to book another one, that can be the place for you. Independence of the Seas also has a couple different places to enjoy some sweets. You've got Ben and Jerry's. You've got the Sugar Beach area. Also the collection, which is a shop of, well, souvenirs and different clothing, apparel that you can get. And uh, this can be a combination of either, oops, I forgot to pack these things, or, hey, those things look nice. I'd like to have them in my collection, and you can purchase them on board. You're also going to find Royal Caribbean-themed apparel here as well, so that way you can represent Royal Caribbean when you're back at home and let everybody know that you're a big Royal Caribbean cruiser or you went on one ship. Next door to the collection is Sugar Beach. Sugar Beach is a candy store. Yeah, uh, if you go in with your kids, good luck getting out without buying anything. But here you're going to find, well, a lot of candy choices for you. Sugar Beach offers a variety of candies and chocolates. You can buy them by the pound. You can buy them packaged. And no doubt it will be the fuel your kids need to run up and down the halls like crazy. <laughs> They're just going to have a lot of energy for it. But sometimes people like to bring you know some of these treats home. And otherwise, it's just a, a reward for the kids or the adults. I mean, let's, let's face it. There's nothing wrong with buying your own chocolate and candy and having it in the room for you. You can find them here at the Sugar Beach. Across from Sugar Beach is Cafe Promenade where the adults can get their kicks. That of course is where you're gonna get coffee, teas. This is complimentary at Cafe Promenade. I should have mentioned Sugar Beach does cost extra, whereas Cafe Promenade is complimentary, although there are some drinks that do cost extra. Like if you wanna get a latte or an espresso, you can get that here. It's included with the drink package, but will cost you extra if you don't have the drink package, but they have regular coffee, regular tea, and also snacks available. That's kind of the nice thing about Cafe Promenade, a good variety of food, whether you're talking about sandwiches or fruit, or grabbing, of course, a cup of coffee. You can do that here as well. Most of the food is included. I'm actually not even sure if there's any food that does cost extra, but the coffees, the lattes, the espressos, those are available here at Cafe Promenade, and that is included with a Royal Caribbean drink package. And then you have Ben & Jerry's ice cream. Yeah, while there is complimentary ice cream on board, Ben & Jerry's is, well, it's Ben & Jerry's. It's a higher quality ice cream and different flavors, and this does cost extra to get ice cream here but sometimes you just want a different flavor. Maybe you want fish food or Chunky Monkey or any of the other, you know, very, very popular Ben and Jerry's ice cream flavors. They're available here. All right, let's walk down the Royal Promenade. There's more to see and more to do here. Uh, starting with, of course, you've got some more shopping, the Michael Kors store on your left. You've got the jewelry store on your right. So plenty of shopping opportunities. And, you know, again, for most people, you might be wondering, well, why would I ever go in here buy things? Well, it's you're on vacation. You want to splurge a little bit and have something to remember the trip. There's, you know, usually there's not much impetus for, for buying souvenirs, but if you'd like to, they have those options for you if you enjoy that shopping. Next up, we have Vintages, which is the Royal Caribbean wine bar on the Royal Promenade. Vintages serves, well, as you might imagine, a lot of wine. If you're a wine fan, red, white, or otherwise, this is the place to go because the greatest variety of wine will be found here. There's also the comfiest chairs you're going to find in Vintages, and it's also pretty quiet. Vintages is not usually a very busy venue, so if you're looking for somewhere quieter to sit, 
especially in the evening times when other bars are a little more rowdy or lively, Vintages can be a great spot for you. Uh, and I love those couches at the back, man. Those are borderline good for napping if it wasn't a little weird that someone's napping while everyone else is enjoying wine. But vintages, of course, wine costs extra on a relative increase. But if you have a drink package, it does include some, but not all, of the wines on a per glass basis. Also, you'll notice there's a shortcut to Casino Royale right there. So if you need to go down to the casino quickly, you can get it from the Royal Promenade. There's also the Trend Store. Again, more shopping, more jewelry options for you. and the Solera Beauty Store, which offers, yes, you guessed it, more souvenirs, more shopping experiences. You know, Independence has a lot of shopping, I've got to admit, on the Royal Promenade. My favorite place to hang out, the Ale and Anchor. Yes, this is the pub on board the Independence of the Seas. This is an English-style pub, and what's great about the pub is not, first of all, they have a wonderful selection of beers. If you're a big beer drinker, this is your best option for you. But in the evening, there is a pub singer who plays live music most nights. I think it's usually they have one night off, but it's a great spot to kind of hang out and sing along to songs you know about, you know, bar songs, right? Low Places and Kenny Chesney and everything else in between. You've got some great music to sing along to as you drink and chat, and it's a great social place. And I just love the pub because I just like the music that they sing here. It's a pretty large area. And unlike other roller coaster ships, the seating is a little more eclectic. There's a little more variety of seating is what I'm really trying to say. There's also seating outside the Ellen Anchor on the promenade, and you can still hear the music from inside, but it's more of a people watching experience out on the Royal Promenade. The port and shopping desk is where you can go if you have any questions about the ports you're gonna be visiting and well, going shopping. Royal Caribbean does offer some shopping guides, some stores that you know that you can go to. Also, you've got Sorrento's on the Independence of the Sea. Sorrento's, of course, is the classic Royal Caribbean complimentary pizza spot where you can get pizza throughout the day and late night. Emphasis on late night, because I think a lot of people come here for a late night, but it's great pizza, actually. Royal Caribbean improved it a couple of years ago. And I think it's really good quality now and you get different varieties. Usually every day you're going to have cheese and pepperoni and then a rotating variety of pizzas. Uh, you know, you, your name does not have to be Earl to enjoy great pizza here or slices by the dozen because there's lots of pizza options. And you know what? It's just a crowd pleaser. Who doesn't like pizza, right? It's great. You're also going to find the Coca-Cola Freestyle Machines at Sorrento's. They're also available in other places on the ship, but the Freestyle Machines are available if you have a drink package. You get those special cups to use. You put them in there, and you get all sorts of combinations of weird Coca-Cola drinks that your kids can come up with. So good luck with that. <laughs> You're also going to have one more place to go shopping on the Royal Promenade. It's the Market. The Market is kind of the general store, if you will, where you're going to find, well, you're going to find liquors. You're going to find souvenirs, cigarettes, other things to bring home. So if you're looking to pick up some different uh, duty-free liquors, this might be the good spot for you. They also have other things besides just liquor, of course, if you want to pick up some. Again, it's more like a general store. They have knickknacks and medicines and all sorts of things. So maybe worth a stop and just see what they got. And by the way, if you buy any liquor on board through this store, they will hold it for you and deliver to your room on the last day of the cruise. And here are some of the Royal Caribbean merchandise. So this is really where you're going to go for a logo apparel. You want to have a Royal Caribbean branded shirt or sweatshirt or backpack. This is the place to go. Uh, I really like the coffee mugs. You're also gonna find the ship models here, which have a scale model of Independence of the Seas. Also some toys and things, and yeah, don't bring your kids in here. It just never ends well. It's always like, why can't I get it? Well, Camille got it. Yeah, well, I'm not Camille's dad, but you know, we've been through this many, many times. All right, heading down the row promenade, we're gonna check out the Centrum area. This is the other, also the forward elevator banks, which can take you up to the different decks and whatnot. There's two elevator banks on Independence of the Seas. We saw previously the aft elevator bank. This is the forward elevator bank and they can take you up. There's also stairs to take, which is probably not a bad idea because it's good for exercise, or at least, anyway, I think about it this way, that if I walk up three decks of stairs, I've totally offset all the sweets I ate. Here is the library conference room area where you can kind of check out, and it's usually, I think most people have no idea this place exists, but despite the name, you're not seeing a lot of books here, obviously, I think this is a COVID thing as when we recorded this video, but it's really just kind of this place where you can go and relax and read quietly, essentially, more than anything. Next to the library is the Star Lounge. This is a multi-purpose venue where you'll have bingo, where you'll have live music, and a variety of other events throughout the day. There is a bar in the back of it, and basically Royal Caribbean uses this venue for different activities. It's a little bit of a bigger facility, so when they want to have you know live music you can dance to, the Star Lounge is the place for it. They can also do karaoke here, if memory serves me correctly. All right, let's head downstairs from deck five down to deck four. And a couple of new things here. First of all, we've got Izumi Hibachi and Sushi. 
If you like Izumi, if you like Japanese food, this is the place to go. This is actually one of the larger hibachi restaurants, the teppanyaki style dining where they cook in front of you. It's really good. This obviously does cost extra. There's also sushi available if you'd like to get sushi. Uh, that can be either ordered at the sushi bar or at the hibachi table, but there's a lot of food here and it's really good. I love hibachi because it's just satisfying. It's it's like the best Japanese comfort food there is, if you ask me. Uh, you know, you can get different chicken and shrimp and lobster and steak, and it's a fun experience. They're not just cooking in front of you. There's a show component to it, and it can be a lot of fun. If you want to do hibachi, I would recommend getting reservations as soon as you can because this place does sell out. It's very popular, and they have limited seating to it. So check that out, but I think it's a must-do. If you're going to eat at one specialty restaurant on Independence of the Seas, I think Izumi Hibachi is the place to go. Next door to Izumi Hibachi is the Schooner Bar, the classic piano bar on any Royal Caribbean cruise ship. So in the daytime, the Schooner Bar is, well, it's a bar, and they use it usually for trivia and some other special events. But at night, it is the piano bar where they sing along to all the songs they can play on the piano. A lot of Billy Joel, a lot of Elton John, a lot of Adele, and a lot of other songs that are traditionally piano songs. So where the pub is guitar songs, this is piano songs, and man, there's a lot of them, so you can expect to hear some favorites and some classics. The Royal Theater on the Independence of the Seas, where you'll find the different shows and performances throughout your cruise. Independence of the Seas does have Grease the Broadway Musical on board for you to check out. There's also going to be other events like comedians and maybe some featured performers. But, you know, this is something that's actually very unique in that it's very there are very few cruise ships that have a Broadway musical that are not Oasis or Quantum Class ships. Independence is one of them. So Grease the Broadway Musical is performed here on Independence. And it's complimentary. You heard right. That's pretty darn impressive. When it comes to getting tickets, by the way, for Greece, I mentioned they're complimentary, but you're going to want to get reservations as soon as you get on board. My best advice is as soon as you get on board the ship, connect to the Wi-Fi, make reservations for those shows. There's also a conference center on Independence of the Seas. The conference center is where you go only probably if you're here with a group. Basically, if no one tells you to go here, then you probably are never going to go here. But it's where you could go to for a conference. Also, the loyalty ambassador is buried down there. We're going to go back up to the Schooner Bar on Deck 4. You can check out the casino, of course, because we missed that part. So the casino is right in the middle of Deck 4. You can walk to it from either the Schooner Bar side or Playmakers, which we'll see in a second. But the casino is where you go to well, you gamble. Playmakers is actually really impressive. So Playmakers is a sports bar on Independence, and it's located on the other side of the casino. If you're wondering what the heck this place was before, because this was added in 2018, this used to be the photo area, if you can believe it or not, because it's massive. And there's a lot of TVs and some video games as well, pool tables, but this is really your go-to bar, sports bar place, and I love it. There's also food available at Playmakers. There's a, it's a specialty restaurant where you can order food as you go, so it's, instead of having a covered charge, you pay for each item individually. So if you order one dish, then you only pay for one dish. If you order eight dishes, you order eight dishes, right? And there's a lot of TVs, a lot of seating, certainly on days in which there are major sporting events. They usually have coverage of it. Remember, this is a cruise ship in the Caribbean or somewhere else. So, you know, the satellite coverage can differ, but they usually carry like NFL games and playoff games, things of that nature. So you should be able to watch most of them while on board. And it's a massive space. And I love Playmakers. It can get very busy down here, but, you know, it's I, I love it. I think it's really, really nice to have this space. And it's just a really cool vibe to it, quite frankly. And I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the food because the nachos and all the appetizers are really good. They have appetizers, they have chicken sandwiches, they have chicken wings, uh, a couple other dishes as well, burgers. I think Playmakers is underrated. And if you're going on board, you know, I mentioned earlier, Zumi Abachi is probably the place to go. Playmakers might be a close second. It's really great, I think, for most meals, you know, maybe like a lunch or something like that or a late afternoon snack. Boleros is next to Playmakers but on deck four. Boleros is the Latin themed bar where you're going to be able to find a lot of drinks. The mojito is definitely the drink to get here in the evening time. This is the stowaway piano player who just happened to be performing here. Not necessarily part of the Bolero scene, but the stowaway piano player is somebody who performs different songs and they just show up randomly. It's kind of a fun thing about it. This time they're in Boleros, but he could be almost anywhere. But Boleros is really known for the Latin music at night. If you walk on the rail promenade, you're going to hear it because there is going to be some salsa merengue and other Latin music being played with a live band, not DJs, live band down here. But I think if you want to have a great mojito or any Caribbean drink, this might be one of the best places to go. They really make it fresh and it's really nice. Also, check out the seating on the other side of Boleros. There's some great, it's usually a little less crowded. We're going to go out to the promenade deck on deck four. This is the outdoor deck that wraps all the way around deck four. 
I love this area. Just kind of hang out. We like going here after dinner and taking a walk or if you're on a sea day, just want to have an ocean breeze. There's no music over here. It's quiet. It's serene. It's also smoking on one side of the deck, but uh, I, I actually enjoy it because it's great views of the ocean. It's just, I, you can read a book out here. You can just stare. You can take a nap. It's, it's a great outdoor space to check on out. If your cruise ship is pulling into port or sailing away, this can be a great spot. And it leads us to one of my favorite secrets about Independence of the Seas, and that is the helipad. Yes, you can go on the helipad anytime you want on Independence. Just go out on deck four, walk all the way forward, and you will literally run into the helipad. And the helipad, well, it's a helipad, obviously, but most of the times you can go out there, there's benches to sit on. You can do the, I'm the king of the world pose on the front of the ship as if you weren't the 8,000th person to do that on this cruise, but it's still a good photo op, right? Sunsets, sailaways, this is the spot for you, no doubt about it. Now, as I mentioned, the promenade deck goes all the way around, so you can be on the front. We were on the helipad on the front. You can walk all the way to the back as well, so it's great views, and if you want to just get like, this isn't the jogging track, but this is just kind of a relaxing area, and I really like it. It's really pretty, sunsets. Again, you're pulling out of port, you're pulling into port, it's a great view, not usually very crowded. And if you are a smoker, by the way, uh, the port side, there are smoking facilities for you. Back inside, we're going to go down to deck three now, starting with the art gallery. And the art gallery is down at the bottom of the centrum of deck three. It's right below the rainbow bridge and some other things that we saw earlier on deck four and five. But this is where you can go if you'd like to preview the art. They'll be part of an auction later on, probably in the star lounge. As you walk through deck three from the art gallery, you're gonna walk into the photo area. This is where you go to preview the photos that you may have taken on board the ship. There'll be complimentary photo stations for you to take photos every evening of the cruise. And when you wanna see what the photo actually looks like and possibly order a print or a download, this is where you can go. Again, to take the photos is complimentary, but to buy the photos costs money. You can buy individual photos, you can buy a photo package. And there's also a portrait studio. The portrait studio usually has a sitting fee for it. But if you're interested in more formal prints, you just want to get everybody and get all the theme to it, that's an option you can inquire in for as well. But the photos are usually taken on the Royal Promenade and some other places around the ship. So if you see a photographer and they take your photo, this is where you can go on deck three to get it. And of course you have Studio B. Studio B is the ice skating rink on Independence of the Seas. And the Studio B area is for two purposes. One, for the ice skating shows, and two, for free skate. The free skate is, well, complimentary. You can actually go here. They provide the equipment for you. You just have to sign up and you can try your luck at skating. Some people are really good at it. Some people are not so good at it. And some people are like me and they just kind of shuffle their feet around for about 20 minutes. But that's a nice fun activity and it's complimentary. You need long pants and socks. Make sure you pack those because in the summertime, most people do not think about that. But in addition to the free skating, there's also an ice skating show that's performed in Studio B and it is complimentary as well. What's cool about the ice skating show is these are actually really good performers. These are former Olympians or national competitors who put on a great show in Studio B. And I think it's worth seeing because they can do some really incredible stunts and tricks and double and triple axles. I think triple axles is the only move I actually know by name because I think that's like the big move, the to-do move. But there's other things they do as well. And it's really a fun show. So check that out, complimentary. Just like the Grease show or anything else, you should probably get reservations for it via the cruise planner as soon as you get on board the ship. We're gonna head up the stairs and check out a couple more areas before we end this video. I know we've seen so much of Independence of the Seas. Of course, you're gonna find the staterooms all throughout the middle part of the ship. We kind of jumped around there. So what happened to deck eight, nine, 10, 11? Yeah, that's where you're really where you're gonna find the staterooms, right? Odds are your staterooms gonna be somewhere between, gosh, you know, deck 11 all the way down to deck two potentially different serum configurations, balcony, inside, ocean view. There's a lot of different configurations that are out there. Which cabin's right for you? Depends on your budget, quite frankly, and how many people are going with you. There's arguments to be made. We have other YouTube videos where we talk about what you should do in terms of what rooms to get. Check out our YouTube channel for more videos on picking the right stateroom for you. Well, there you go. There's our look at Royal Caribbean's Independence of the Seas. I hope you found this video helpful and this tour helpful to get you an idea of where everything is, what there is to do on board the ship. I love the Freedom Class ships. I think they're vastly underrated and a great value, especially for families. There's a lot to do. You're not compromising on the onboard experience. If you like this video, hit the like button below. Make sure you also subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications. That's that little bell icon. So that way YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.